are the headlines of the hottest news. Chin Kings defeat against Bolts in Game 6 of PBA's Governor's Cup Finals. AFP military operation ends after five months of siege in Marawi. Isabel Granada's condition after being hospitalized in Qatar. Preparations in the upcoming ASEAN Summit in the Philippines. Underage by robbers attack. Donald Trump's fight against the opioid crisis in America. Good day everyone! Underage bike robbers recently attacked an expensive bike in Sasman, Pampanga. The incident was taken by CCTV that caused to know the identity of the robbers. We have Daniel Dumanuk to report. Peter Gopal, a victim of bike robbery. Watch how the thieves scattered and robbed his bike that worth 20,000 pesos. The incident was captured by a CCTV where three underage suspects are caught talking and planning to do the said robbery. Knowing the identity of one of them caused all the three suspects to be immediately arrested. Their parents were called to discuss things between the complainant. Tension occurred when the complainant arrived. Chin Kings end up losing in their home court in Game 6 of Best of 7 series in the PBA's Governor's Cup Finals. We have John Dexter Bennett to report. The crowd has always been one of the main advantages of Enebro San Miguel whenever it took the court. In Game 6, almost 54,000 fans troop at the Philippine Arena expecting a celebration. Unfortunately, Meralco rained on the Gene Kings Parade and scored the 98-91 victory on Wednesday to extend the series to a winner-take-all Game 7 on Friday. We disappointed 50,000 fans tonight, said Ginebra playmaker L.A. Tenorio who struggled to hide his frustration over the lackluster play of his side in what could have been the title clincher. The season point guard acknowledged that the Bulls did everything they wanted for the night, including taking away what felt like Gene King's home court advantage. I am John Dexter Bueno, reporting. AFP military offensive ends after five months of battle in the city of Marawi. The end of war drew mixed emotions to the people of Marawi and also to bishops in CBC. We have Gio Fetalino for the report. Exactly five months after the war outbreak in Marawi was declared that the said siege is over. The long war gave around 1,000 deaths and immense damages overall. Exactly five months after the war outbreak in Marawi was declared that the said siege is over. The long war gave around 1,000 deaths and immense damage overall. The AFP struck the Maute group in Lanz and Lake Danao. The government troops face hard time in the global warfare or combat in populous places or infrastructure in buildings. The military said that the terrorists seem to have unending sources of bullets, arms, and other resources. The airstrikes from the AFP constantly occurs daily in the war. After the months of battles, the military officially announced that their offense is over. The termination of combat operation means that the military terminates the assault and the offensive attack. Jewel Petalino reporting. Former actress Isabel Granada still in a state of coma after being hospitalized due to brain aneurysm. Showbiz and non-showbiz personalities are praying for her cause. Here's Sofia Galvan, the report. Isabel Granada 41-year-old actress was invited in Qatar to speak in Philippine Trade and Tourism Conference. In the afternoon of that day, the actress unexpectedly collapsed. Arnel Cowley, Isabel Granada's husband, confirmed that his wife's condition is critical, which is currently in an intensive care unit of the Hamad Hospital. Isabel suffered from a brain hemorrhage, which indicates aneurysm and in turn affected her heart. The actress currently has no response. The supports from Isabel's colleagues and fans flowed to social media. In the recent Facebook post of Bianca Lapus, she asked prayers for Isabel. Also, Denita Rose, that was once a part of that's entertainment, believes in the power of prayers for her friend. Chucky Dreyfus, Isabel's past love king, also asked for prayers and worries about her condition. Sophia Galvan, reporting. The 
preparation for the upcoming ASEAN Summit that will be hosted by Philippines is still in development process. Here's Margonic Dow to give us the latest news for the event. All arrivals and departures in principle will be at Clark Airport. These measures are taken to not re-experience what we had last APEC 2015, where hundreds of passengers in AIA were affected. The guests or leaders will travel 90 km from Clark to Manila. Based on the doctor dry runs recently, it will take about 1 hour and 17 minutes. The convoys will go through NLEX, EDSA, and Ross Boulevard to go to their respective hotels. 21 world leaders were expected to attend the summit, excluding the host country, Philippines. Another nine leaders and representatives of ASEAN member states, namely Brunei Darussalam, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. Eleven dialogue partners are also expected to attend, including America. Margonic Dow reporting. PM today, the center of severe tropical storm Fedan was estimated based on all available data at 1,105 kilometers of Aparicabea, with maximum sustained wind of 90 kilometers per hour near the center and gusting is up to 100 kilometers per hour. It is forecast to move north northwest at 21 kilometers per hour. ITCC affecting the now. Cebu and the rest of Visayas, Occidental Mindoro, and Palawan will have partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers and thunderstorms. Moderate to strong winds blowing from the northeast to northwest will prevail over Visayas and Occidental Mindoro, and from the northeast will prevail over Palawan. The coastal waters along these areas will be moderate to rough. President Donald Trump declared a nationwide public health emergency to combat the opioid crisis Thursday at the White House event. Effective today, my administration is officially declaring the opioid crisis a national public health emergency under federal law, and why I am directing all executive agencies to use every appropriate emergency authority to fight the opioid crisis. That concludes our news for today. This is CBC, where news comes first. I am Antoinette Mariano. Thank you and good day.